this week on Exalted Word Ministry. She's a new every morning. Somebody else say thank you, Jesus, for giving me new mercy. I know I'm still struggling. I know I'm still going through something. But there will be glory after this. Unshakable faith. And our message today is creative intention. Creative intention. So in our in our scripture reading today, it was read in our hearing out of Isaiah, the 55th chapter, and it was read verses 1 through 11. But I just want to read for you for you one portion of that scripture, which is verse number 11. And God said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. You supposed to read it, not unread it. There you go. Read it for me. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Uh -huh. It shall not return unto me void. Somebody say it won't come back void. That means that what God has said will always make an impact. It will always be impactful if we can receive it by faith. Somebody say receive it by faith. So it, it, it's going to be impactful. Read. But it shall accomplish that which I please. So what God desired to happen as a result of him speaking is what happened. When he said, let there be light, guess what? Darkness started backing up. Well, yeah. Come on here. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let me talk to you. You weren't even brainiac. There's a, there's a thing that they have called the Hubble Telescope. And the Hubble Telescope is so strong, Sister Shay, it can see the edge of our universe. And the most significant part about them being able to see the edge of the universe is that they found out that light is still proceeding out into darkness. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all didn't get that. There are some areas that are dark. There's no light whatsoever in it. But with the Hubble telescope, they have found that what God said in Genesis is still, y'all, oh my God. Y'all uh, must not be with me today. It shall accomplish that which I read Please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. It shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So in this passage, this passage is simply talking about how awesome God's word is. It says that when God speaks, things actually happen. See, we, 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 in this modern time, we, uh, we can become disconnected with God in our thoughts because we, since I've been born, there's always been grass. Uh -huh. But we miss the idea that in Genesis, he said that the seed was within itself. And that's why when you cut your grass, you've got to keep cutting it. We, we, we fail to understand that it ain't enough just to cut the tree down, minister. They, gotta, they, got, to, they got to keep the tree cut and even pull up the root. Or guess what? What God said is still going to manifest. You can pour concrete and I promise you that the, that the, the dandelions will come up through the cracks. God's word will never fall flat. Stop talking your word. Learn how to talk. God talk. That's right. 
Y'all ain't hear me this morning. His word will never fail. It will always have an impact. The passage is telling us that we ought to ditch all the ideas that this is just a word and it don't have no meaning to it. I need you to lose all kind of thought that would tell you that this thing ain't real. Instead, you need to understand that this entire Bible is power. This entire Bible has the power to change your life. Isaiah, he's actually saying that we should take God's word seriously. Not just brush it off like it don't matter. Dr. Maurice, when you guys begin to speak God's word, things begin to happen. See, I know it may seem like the enemy is fighting you guys all the time, but guess what? He keep you speaking. Y'all ain't hear me. Y'all ain't. He keep you praying. And I, oh, call my shit. I didn't come here to act up. But there will be glory after this. Y'all ain't hear me. There's going to be glory after this. There's no way you can keep going through what you're going through and there not be some glory at the end of the rainbow. Come on here. We're not looking for no pot of gold, but there's some glory. Somebody else say glory, glory, glory. There's some glory coming after this. You've got to understand that when the enemy is fighting you, he's fighting you because he understands that if he ever takes his foot off your neck, that you get ready to get up. You get ready to get up with power and authority and tear his. Okay, I'm going I'm to act right. I'm going to I'm stay still. I'm stay still. I'm stay still. God's word is a serious thing. It's a serious thing. When you get in a tough spot, this passage reminds us to turn to God's word. I know you won't call your mama. I know you won't call your daddy. But I promise you, we said it on yesterday. They got to deal with life just like you got to deal with life. But when you call on God, he will step in the middle of your situation. And what I like about him, you know what, Sister Miller, you know what I like about him the most? There's been some things that I did not like that I was going through. I didn't like it. I didn't like it a bit. I was mad. Barnes, I was mad at what I was going through. But mother, you know what? He didn't even change it. Guess what he did? He changed me while I was in it. Y'all ain't talking. Anybody, anybody understand that God will change you? While you're in your go through. The verse, this verse is like a, it's like a, <laughs> I can't think of no other words. It's like a big old pat on the back. And it says, hey, trust in the powerful tool to heal and restore your life. Basically, this passage is, is, is sharing how God's word can totally change your life and the world you live in. Now, I know people in the church, somebody say in the church, and they try many, many things, many different things to make their life better. I'm not against counseling. I do counseling. I'm not, a, I'm not against coaching. I like coaching. I'm not against therapy. I'm not against any of those things. But I'm a witness. That the word of God can change you from the inside out. However, I can, I can, I can only, it, it can only help us if you're willing to help yourself. So we got too many people that are hearing the word, but they're not taking the word beyond it being heard. The strategy for making the word work is not just talking about the word. Did, boy, didn't we have some good service? Boy, didn't we jerk and flinch? But do you believe what was said? Somebody said, do you believe what it said? Please, let me help us. Let me help us. Because I probably come from one of the most religious areas that you could possibly be in. I was in Lenore, North Carolina. I was a mission. I was a, a, a missionary Baptist. I was a, a New Light Missionary Baptist. Mount Pilgrim Missionary Baptist. Then I left the, the, the Missionary Baptist and Barnes. I went over and became a Midnight. Y'all ain't talking to me. 
men at night. Women can't do nothing. Can't do. Well, I came at midnight. But they just love Jesus and, and shout and holler. And, and, but guess what? It was not my religious participation that God was looking at. He didn't care nothing about how I dressed. That's why we don't tell y'all to come to the yeah, yeah, Don't come up in here without a tie. You ladies, don't come in here with your pants on. We'll put you, you, they'll sometimes put you out. Put you out because you come in. And I understand, but come on. This is a whole nother time. That's for your grandmammy in there. <laughs> a woman ain't got no business having on what pertain to a man. She bought them at Kato's. I bought these at Walmart. The key is belief. Do you believe the verses you're quoting? Well, come on. Now I heard you say, I heard some of you say that faith will move mountains. But do you believe that faith can move your mountain? Huh? Do you believe that faith can move mountains? Do you believe that if you confess your sins that you can be forgiven? And if you believe it, why some of us still acting out? I saw you. I saw you. Look at your neighbor and say, I saw you. I saw you when you came up for prayer. I saw you when you came up for prayer and you let them elders lay hands on you and pray for your healing. But guess what? It will not be the act of them laying hands on you that heals you. It will be you believing that God can use a dirty instrument. Your God of mine. He can use a dirty instrument. Listen, he used a rooster to convict Peter. Do you believe him? Do, somebody say, do you believe him? It's not about the acts that we perform, but it's rather it's about what we believe. And listen, if you don't get nothing else out of this message today, you're going to get what you believe. You, you're going to get what you believe. I learned that the hard way. You can sit around and worry about this and worry about that, and you're going to get more of what you sit around and worry about. But if you sit around and you believe that things are going to get better because I'm trusting God, you got to understand God is listening. I promise you, the Bible said there's not a hair on your head that is not numbered, and He lets you know that there's not a sparrow that can fall to the ground that God don't know about. Tell your neighbor God knows all about your situation. But do you trust him with it? Do you trust him with your situation? Do you trust him with your problem? Or you just come, you just come to the prayer line so you can tell somebody else what you're going through. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God faith comes from hearing the word of God let me explain Romans 10 and 17 the word hearing faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God now that word hearing comes from the Greek word echos, which means the sense of hearing and it also means what is heard. Not everything that you listen to is going to build your faith. Y'all better get that. Not everybody that you're talking to. Listen, you got money problems and you're talking to broke folk. to talk to you about I got financial problems and you talk about I know what you mean I know what you mean I, be, I, look, I don't even know how I'm going to get something to eat this evening them is not the, listen listen please don't call it humility stand around people that can't help you get up I can't, I can't, I can't get no help in the room I, I can't get no help stop talking Issues with people who have the same issue as you. Find someone that's been delivered from what you're going through. Find 
somebody that's been delivered. Find someone that has been set free that they no longer. The Bible said you come through the fire and you won't even smell like smoke. Y'all ain't talking to me. Have I got anybody in here that really been through some mess? And because God delivered God Almighty, have I got any delivered folk today? Folk that have really been set free. I can walk by her and she don't bother me. Y'all ain't talking. I can walk by him and it don't bother me. No. I was standing at the at, at, at the store and I smelled the yeah 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 I smelled the good good yeah 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 I walked down the aisle and the and the, and the wild Irish rose it was still smelling good while the bull was chasing after me y'all ain't talking to me but because I'm delivered because God changed me because He came into my heart one day somebody said He picked me up. Turn me around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody been changed? There's something about being changed. When I look back what God has brought me from, and I know what I know that I know that I did, I did it. Don't you dare get free and act like you uh, I'm delivered and act like you better than the person that's still in. The devil is alive. If it had not been for God and because of his grace and his mercy that we are not consumed. His mercies are new every morning. Somebody else say thank you Jesus for giving me new mercy. I know I'm still struggling. I know I'm still going through something. But there will be glory after this. There's going to be glory after this. I might be struggling today, Marcus, but there's glory after this. The enemy is fighting me because he knows that I'm getting ready to get free. Don't you dare get upset when the battle gets worse than what it was. That only means that I'm closer to the coming out. Tell somebody I'm about to come out. I'm about to get free. I used to think that the stronger that I was, there's the more that I needed that strength. But then I found out that in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. The more I submit, the more I give up, the stronger God. Y'all better sit down. Y'all about to make me hurt myself. I'm getting, I'm, getting ready, I'm getting ready to make y'all say something stupid. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Stop trying to be strong. Stop trying to be strong. Stop trying to be strong. Stop trying to do this on your own. Look at your neighbor and say, you can't do it on your own. You can't do this by yourself. You need somebody that is going to step in beside you and be what the Bible calls an advocate. Y'all sit down, y'all make me nervous. Well, you started it yesterday. We wish we right. Let's go. You've got to understand that God does not need you to heal you. God don't need you to set you free. Oh God, listen, when you go to the doctor, the doctor don't need you to help diagnose your problem. He going to ask you a few questions, but then he going to run some tests. God Almighty. See, some of you got to understand God just running some tests on you. I know, I, I know. I, you don't want to get no blood, but God just running some tests. I know that you don't want to go inside of the machine that's making the noise, but God just giving you a test. So he can give you a testimony. Somebody in here understand what it means to have a testimony. That means I've been through hell and back. That means the devil hit me with his best shot. Tell somebody, but I'm here and I'm still alive. Oh devil, take your best shot, but I'm still here. I'm still going to give God praise. Do what you need. I'm still going to lift him up. Tell somebody I'm going to lift him up. When the enemy come in like a flood, the Bible says that the Lord will lift up a standard against you. Anybody trusting God today? I 
I didn't come to do all this. Y'all never gonna be messing up my message. Y'all messing, y'all messing up my message. Y'all messing up my message. But I feel that somebody been struggling. I feel that somebody been going through something. And the enemy wants you to believe that you are defeated. But I want to tell you today that greater is the giant that's on the inside. Greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. Everything that you listen to is not going to build your faith. It's what you hear that matters. Mother, we used to be able to say, well, long as you in church, baby. But we got churches now that will let you live any kind of way. Any kind of way. Any kind of lifestyle that you see fit, you can be Bali, Polly, all them other Mollies, y'all ain't talking to me. Now I'm trying to be nice, I'm gonna try to be nice. But guess what? It don't come easy coming this way. This way is not easy. He did not mean for this this journey from here to eternity to be easy. He said, narrow is the way. And few are they that enter in. You must be willing to hear the word of God and apply it to your life. You got to apply what you hear. Somebody say, apply what you hear. What I mean by this is you, you, you must listen with the intent of following the direction. Now us men, we're bad. We're bad. We'll open the box, throw the, throw the directions to the side, and we'll wing it. <laughs> Miss Tammy had this, the, if y'all's been to, I've been to our house in our front room, there's this beautiful, beautiful uh, stand that's holding that TV on it. And uh, she said, baby, you gonna help me put it together? I know I'm not. Because if I put it together, they're going to be extra pieces. They're going to be pieces left out. And I ain't got the patience. I said, call Miss Quisha. Ask her if, if her and Maurice could come over here and, le and listen. They was over there putting that thing together so long, I went to bed on them. And he just patient, just smiling. He like you, just happy, just putting stuff together. You got to follow the directions. Now, while every one of us is in here today and you have the opportunity to hear, not everyone is going to listen with the intent of applying what's being said. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm, I'm, I need, sometimes, you, man, you, when I say stuff, sometimes I got to give a prerequisite. I'm really not trying to be funny and I'm not trying to be mean. And there may be some of you in here that have excellent recall ability. You can remember things. But the majority of you need to be taking notes. You need to be writing something down. You need to be recording something. Or going back and listening to the message again. That's how you listen with intent. The church has lost this ability to focus on the things of God long enough to make it a part of who they are. If you don't do anything with what you're hearing, you're really not listening with intent. Many of us have been tricked by the devil. The devil sitting back laughing at some of us. <laughs> they in church again. <laughs> because some of us are aware that unconsciously we've been coming to church as a form of mere entertainment to fulfill an obligation spiritual you know people in my family you know this yes I used to do this too I grew up in the church and you grew up in and I used to brag you know my uncle's pilgrims of faith 
Everybody knew Pilgrims of Faith and Margaret to Lenore Hickory. Everybody knew. Then, then my uncle, listen, their righteousness won't do nothing for me. The devil is not afraid if you grew up in the church. The devil gets afraid when you grow up in the word. Have I got anybody in here that wants to grow up in the word? I'm talking about you. You're past. Sister Shay, you past. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, my soul to take. Amen. You got to be past that. You got to be past that. You actually, and, and I know this is going to mess with some of y'all, you actually got to get past the place of where you think you have to have a certain time and position to pray. You got to begin to get to the place to where you walk in the attitude of prayer. We get ready to get on the road, and I'm, I'm not messing with Pastor, but Pastor say, Lord, give us traveling mercy. I look at him. Because I'm the, I'm the person that get on the plane, and the plane starts shaking, and the man beside me grabbed my hand like I was his wife. I said, baby, this plane can't go down. I'm on here. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm the, one, I'm the one that told him the plane cannot go down because I'm on this plane to go preach. See, there got to come a place where prayer, everybody needs to pray. Everybody needs to pray. But then there's also got to come a place to where I already know this. So now I'm not really just praying to ask you anything. I'm praying to thank you that it's already done. Come on, somebody. Have I got anybody in here that I don't waste time telling God what I need? The Bible said that he's Jehovah Jireh. He's the God that is providing all that I need even before I ask him. He's supplying our needs. He is the one that when you get the bad report, you go and you lay the report down and you say, I will believe the report of the Lord. And you go and get in the bed. Turn on Barney Miller. Y'all ain't talking to me. And go to sleep. I heard what the doctor said. But the doctor didn't know what I had on the inside. The doctor didn't understand. Whose report will you believe? As for me and my house. God Almighty. As for me and my house. Somebody say, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to trust him. I know what everybody's going through. Even in the midst of COVID, we didn't worry about what everybody else was going through. Because we understood that he had already put the blood on the doorpost. Ain't nobody dying over here. Ain't nobody going to be sick too long over here. Why? Because the blood it still works. Have I got anybody in here that would say the blood still works? And it covers. And it flows. It reaches to the highest mountain. up in the church I grew up in the word I got this word on the inside and I understand that it won't go out and it won't return void but when I say something I'm believing that God's going to step in and God's going to do exactly what he said that he'd do Somebody said, grow up in the word, grow up in the word, grow, grow up in the word. Turn the TV off, turn the cartoons off, turn the people off, turn the phone off, and say, here I am, God. I'm standing in the need of a refilling. Fill me up, God, one more time. Somebody ought to lift your hands and say, here I am. Not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord. Mama took me as far as she could take me. Daddy prayed as hard as he could pray. But now I got to get it for myself. Somebody say, yeah. It's me, Lord. It's me. It's, it's me. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Y'all ain't got to watch him. He all right. Y'all enjoy service. 
he a professional praiser. He all right. If he fall out, the Holy Ghost got him. And if he do fall out and, it, and the Holy Ghost ain't got him, we'll know that too. You've got to grow up in the word. The devil fears when you remember and practice the word. Listen. Mark Twain said, the dullest pencil is better than the sharpest memory. The dullest pencil is better than the sharpest memory. Now what he was doing, he's stressing the point of recording your thoughts and your ideas. Some of you in here have books in you. And you're talking about you got writer's block. But the thing of it is, you're having thoughts all the time. You just don't have a way to record them. You don't have a way to catch them. Our memory is unreliable. Anybody in here got a photographic memory? But then we, you, you, yeah, you kind of do. Then yeah, you do too. Remember numbers. I don't even know my phone number. The only reason I know my phone number is because I, I got it. I ain't going to tell y'all that. Y'all be breaking in my stuff. Let me take that back. Your memory is unreliable. You've got to write things down so that you can remember them. Today, today, in today's world, there's so much information that we're, that we're being bombarded with that we're missing important and great ideas. Somebody say, write it down. Even if it's a dull pencil. If it's a half written pen. If you ain't got no pen, my God, you got a cell phone. Text yourself. I'll text Tammy in a minute. She said, what this is? That's something I'm trying to remember, baby. Just leave it, leave it right in there. <laughs> Family, listen to me. It's imperative that we begin to take notes. That we begin to write things in our phone. The information, I'm not saying this is because, of, because it's me, but because I know and I know that this works. The information that I am imparting to you has the power to change your life and the life of those around you. It's critical. So Carlos Castaneda was a Peruvian American author and anthropologist who wrote several spiritual books. And I want to read one of his quotes, and I'm going to get uh, Elder to read that for us. Intent is not a thought. Intent's not a thought. Or an object. Now that was dead. You gave it a dead one. Now go ahead, read. It's picking up. Intent is not a thought. Not a thought. Or an object. Or an object. Or a wish. Not a Listen, when we get to talking about faith and being intentional about your faith, it's all right. Don't distract. It is not hoping. Yeah. There are too many of us in the church still hoping and praying. Yeah. Hoping and praying that God's going to do something. No, there's got to come a place in your walk with Christ where you stop hoping and praying and you intend to see God's will done. Yeah. Now the problem is, we don't know what God's will is because we don't know God's word. Well, I've had so many, I've had so many bad things to happen, so maybe it ain't God's will. No. He said, I wish above all things that you may prosper and that you may be in good health, even as your soul prosper. Some of the stuff that has happened to you, uh, it happened because you made the decision without God. And God's a jealous God. But I promise you, when you begin to want what God wants for you, Read, read, read. Intent is what can make a man defeat uh -huh. when his thoughts tell him that he is defeated. Anybody ever had them thoughts, I'm defeated. Yeah. But when you've intended for something to happen, God is working with you. Read. It operates in spite of the warrior's indulgence. In other words, there's some things in my life that ain't quite right yet. My indulgences. There's some stuff that my flesh still 
like to cuss folk out when they make y'all ain't talking to me. I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that there's some things that that are go listen. I don't care who you are until you out of this flesh, you are gonna have issues. Until you out of this flesh, you still gonna get mad with folk. You still, if you don't say it, you gonna think it. Y'all seen that woman on Facebook? Do you know that the, the one old lady died? The one that cussed so well. She cussed so well. She just cussed so well. But now they got another one on there. And she don't cuss as much, but she'll flinch at you. <laughs> read, read, read. Intent is what makes him invulnerable. Intent is what makes him invulnerable. Listen. This quote is explaining what intent really is. When you think about intent, you may think that it's like having a desire. How many of you have seen them, they get that pit bull and they, put, they put, let him bite on that tire and they can lift him all the way up. Lift him all the way and he just... Rrr. So when we think of intent, a lot of times we think of it like that, like having a pit bull mentality. But this quote lets us know that intent is not simply a strong desire, but rather it's a force that can help a person who is feeling that they are defeated. Any ever, anybody ever been in a place where all your senses said, this is it. I'm about to lose everything. But when you have intent, it is a force that will help that person even though they feel defeated. It's something that operates beyond your immediate wants and desires. Who or what do we really want? Somebody say, what do I really want? Anybody want victory? Anybody want success? Listen, listen, listen. Let me give you another one by, by Costo Colonado. Read this for me. In the universe, you remember, don't get afraid of the universe. God created the universe. The universe is the system that God uses to bless us. That's why you got trees to grow fruit. That's part of the universe. Read. There is an unmeasurable, unmeasurable, indescribable. indescribable. Uh huh. Those that live of the source. I don't live by my job. If you still living by a paycheck and all your trust, some Bible, Bible put it like this some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. But you've got to live by the source. Now I'm getting ready to mess you up, and, 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 and please understand when I say this word, this is the, the I actually changed this got me I actually changed this because I didn't want to mess the religious folk up and so the word means those that live by the source but in the actual writing he said that this universe there is an immeasurable in, indescribable force which the sorcerers but he was talking about those that live by trusting God Read, read, read. Call intent. Uh-huh. Somebody say absolutely. absolutely. Everything. Everything that exists in the entire cosmos everything is attached to As the children of God, you've got to understand that you've got to live and understand the source. God is the source. Somebody say God is the source. God is the source. The Bible says in Acts 17 and 28, for in him we move and we have our being. When you begin to, Maurice, when I, when I begin to contemplate and think about this, can you, can you, you can't help but acknowledge the power that brought us into being. Do you understand that there was a time in your existence when you could fit on the head of a needle my daughter back there about to have a baby how, how many weeks how many long how far along are you seven and a half months that's a big baby he ain't fitting on no head of needle 
He fit on the end of a shovel. Y'all ain't talking to me. <laughs> but when you begin to think about life, as Castaneda so eloquently described, God is unmeasurable. He's indescribable. I liked how I like how Kiki Shear she picked it up and said he he's indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are a he, Mother Job got mad. Now y'all know Job? Job, the Bible said that God allowed Satan to attack Job and said, Don't touch his body. Don't touch it, don't touch his, his soul, don't touch his soul. Because his body was messed up. Y'all ain't talking to me. And Job got mad. Job was fussing with God. Did it go off? No. Job was fussing with God. And he was talking about, he was trying to tell, he was trying to, ah, boy, he was trying to tell God off. And guess what God said? God said, where were you, Job, when I slung the stars into space? Where were you, Job, when I hung the first cloud? Where were you when I brought the sun and the moon into, where were you? Here you are trying to tell me how to do what I got to do. Ain't it amazing how when we going through stuff, we won't tell God how to do it? He laughing. You, the, there's a quote that says, you make plans and God laughs. It's difficult to comprehend how something so all encompass of power could be worried about me. How can God be so great and still worried about me? The psalmist said it like this, Dr. Maurice. What is man that thou art mindful of him? God loves us and he's constant. From the beginning, mother, he was thinking about us. Go on back to Genesis and find out the crowning, the very crowning, the pinnacle of his creation was when he said, let us make man. In our own, everything else had its own place, its own thing. But he said, I'm going to make man, but I'm going to make him like me. Ah, somebody better get that. Somebody better get When God spoke, he was exercising his intent. Look at your neighbor real quick. Help me with this. Say, neighbor, you are a product of God's intent. Y'all didn't get it. <laughs> Y'all didn't get it. You are a product of God's intent. As, as Carlos said, absolutely everything that exists in its entire universe is connected to intent. I need you to know. I don't care if you had or you were an unplanned pregnancy. Y'all ain't talking to me. You're God's intent. Tell somebody I'm God intent. I don't care. I don't care if you was an accident. Y'all ain't talking to me. I, I told y'all on yesterday that Jimmy Hawshaw and Georgie were down at the Ponderosa. And Georgie wasn't even put them in out that night. Come on. But they got in the back of that Chevrolet. Y'all ain't talking to me. And, and nine months later, here I am. But I'm not an accident. Tell somebody I'm not an accident. Tell somebody I'm not an accident. I am the intent of God. And I don't care how much you may battle with low self-esteem. I don't care how much you may battle with depression. I don't care how much you may battle with identity crisis. He doesn't want you to go through this life without finding out who he called you to be. It's important to remember that, 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 that you are not defined. Somebody better get this. You are not defined by your struggles. People like to label you. And when you label me, you negate me. 
I'm not my struggles. How many times have I fallen? It don't matter how many times I've fallen. What matters is how many times have I gotten back up? How many times? Listen, you came over there counting because you want me to be counted out. But the Bible said that I'm cast down, but I'm not destroyed. Yeah, I fell. Yeah, I went back and got drunk. Yeah, yeah, I stepped out. Y'all ain't talking to me. But no matter how many times I went back out, God was standing there waiting for me. I was the prodigal son. Y'all ain't talking to me. Have I got any prodigals in the house? Have I got any people in here that know you messed up? And you messed up real good. Anybody in here know that when God was ready for you to come back home, he was standing and he was waiting with arms wide open. You are a child of God. And your worth is found in him. When you speak words of life and truth over yourself, you can start to see yourself the way God sees you. Stop waiting for God to change the situation and start speaking life over yourself. I am wonderfully created. I am enough. I know mama said I wasn't enough, but I am enough. I know daddy said I wasn't no good. Matter of fact, daddy might have raped me, but I am worth something. Because God created me in his image and likeness. Your struggle does not have to define you. The only reason that your struggle will define you is if you allow it to. I got to be done. Speak words of faith. Words of hope. And trust that God is making every step towards that newness. There's a song where you say, said, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Teach me, lead me, guide me. The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So how do we take faith, which is the divine substance, and allow it to, divide, to, to, to orchestrate and design our life? You do this by speaking words that are divinely creative and intentional. What do you say about yourself? Who was it? Which one of y'all said it about looking in the mirror? You've got to learn how to look in the mirror and like what you see. Even an old barn look good if you put a little paint on it. Y'all, y'all, y'all here. I, I don't do. I, I don't do. Go, please go do that. Go get your. Go get your hand done. Put some paint on. Put, put a little rouge. Put a little rouge. As my grandma said, put a little rouge on your lip. You ain't got. You ain't got to come out looking like like of uh, uh, Tammy Faye Baker. Put you. Put you some little ear bobs in. Come on here. Put you some little ear bobs in. Men, men. Go get you, go get you some, don't, don't, don't go get no Old Spice. Mm -mm. Go get you some, what is it, Gucci Gavana? Get you some, Dolce, Dolce, Dolce Gavana. Go get you some of that. Go get some Dolce. Get you some Paris Hilton. Y'all, listen, listen. You might, you might be ugly as sin, but if you smell good, you, you're going to attract something. Maurice, I was up in the mountains and I done put that Paris Hilton on and we went up on that bridge and, and we were so high up in the mountain. Boy, them mosquitoes was tearing me up. They was all over me. You gonna attract, somebody said you gonna attract something. Your words about yourself need to be intentional. You need to speak life over yourself. If you don't speak life over yourself, who will? If you don't encourage yourself, who will? You got to, be, you got to become unbothered by what other people think about you. So many of us are so worried about what other people think. Honey, I got my own struggle. I ain't got time to worry about what you think about my struggle. Me worrying about what you think about my struggle turns into suffering. Let me give you a new definition. Let me give you a new definition. 
Uh, 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 let's see. Especially, uh, listen. No, re read this part. We gotta read this part. Gotta read this part. Those live of the of the source uh -huh. are not only concerned with understanding and explaining that connecting link. Listen, those of us that live by the source, we're not only concerned with helping other people understand and explaining the source. That's what I'm trying to do today. But but I, I need you to read hear this other part. Read. I'm especially concerned with cleansing it of the numbing effects brought about by all the concerns of living at ordinary levels of consciousness. I want you to make sure the most important thing is you keeping the link clean. Y'all missed it. Y'all didn't get that. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. The most important part is can you keep the link clean? Some of us can't get what we need from God because the connection between us and God ain't clean. Read this new definition. This is a definition that the Lord gave me for the word of God. The, the word of God is the divine creative force. When spoken intentionally will not fail, produce the desired outcome, and prosper in accomplishing the purpose for which you sent it. When you begin to speak God's word with intention, as Christians, we must recognize the importance of connecting our faith with our imagination. Ah, wicked imagination. Well, if there's a wicked one, there's got to be a polar opposite. There's got to be one that's submitted to God. Yeah. Everything in this room came about because someone imagined it to be so before it came about. If, 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 if it had not been all this computer stuff somebody had to imagine it first before it could come into imagination but unfortunately our, our imagination is a creative force and when we submit it to God we can have many of the things that we desire can you see yourself changed you can't just pray about change but all you can see is yourself the way that you are Unfortunately, too many people are claiming to believe God, but daily visualizing the worst case scenario for your life. Imagination serves as a bridge that will consciously or unconscious mind. It bridges them together. And when you begin to imagine, you can begin to attract the things that God's already promised in his word. He said, I'm the head and not the tail. So why am I down all the time? He said, a cattle on a thousand hills are his. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging bread. Why am I always in lack? Why have I always got to settle? When I tap into my imagination and I connect it with my faith and I say, God, show me what you have for me. There's a universal law called the law of attraction that will begin to attract and pull things into my life. The thing that you give your energy, focus, and attention to, that thing is coming in your life. That's why Job, who prayed prayers for his children in case they had sinned, he, were, he was praying prayers of fear and when everything happened Job had to testify and he said the thing I fear most is come upon me if you fear that your car is going to tear down your car is going to tear down if you fear that your job is going to let you go you might as well start looking for another because you out of that brother out of there what you focus on because guess what? Well, I just feel that they're going to cheat on me. Okay, so if you feel that they're going to cheat on you, guess what? If you keep entertaining that thought, this is not an excuse for them. But what happens is you begin to treat them in a way that they got to go. Now you treat me like you don't want me. There's somebody that want me. We've got to understand the things that happen in our life is not to excuse the other person, but what did I do to attract this to happen to me through them? The thing 
I fear is going to run up on me. The Bible says that that man who won't, who won't, that, 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 that talks about in Proverbs, talks about the man who would not go out and do what he needed to do because of fear. And the Bible said that poverty came upon him like a mask robber. What the thing that you fear is the thing that you're attracting. Well, I just feel God won't accept me. Well, you will begin to do things that will cause God not to accept you. I got to be done. So, the connection. Turn this on. The connection. My faith, my imagination. Bringing those two together. Asking God to show me what he has for me. And he says that the thing that they, that they worry about, that we worry about and we need to worry about, is cleansing the numbing effect brought about by all the concerns living ordinary levels of consciousness. As a child of God, you cannot keep living at ordinary levels of consciousness. What are you talking about, Bishop? Well, let me tell you what the old saints used to say. Elevate your mind and let's go higher. Now, you keep thinking the way everybody else thinks, then you're going to get what everybody else thinks. But when you start elevating your mind and talking about, you know, God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory. Now, you got to understand, this connection got, has to be kept clean. You take two metals. And you put those metals together. Eventually, if we don't keep those metals clean, they will corrode. They will corrode. They, they, it, even with your car battery, that, that post will gets corroded and have all the white stuff. And you got to go get a Coca-Cola. Pour that Coca-Cola on there. Well, guess what? When your natural connects with supernatural, if you don't keep it clean, it's going to get corroded. It's going to get corroded. And mother, you can always tell whose connection is corroded. Because when God start moving, they start getting uncomfortable. God start moving, all of a sudden they got to go make a phone call. All of a sudden they got to run, they got to, run to the bathroom. You ain't been about to pee pee. Now the spirit of God moving, you, you, you can't sit still. And they will try to physically distance themselves from the vessels that God is using because they understand God might use them to call something out that I don't want to be exposed yet. Barnes, it's the anointing. If it was not for the anointing on my life, the connection between me and God would become corroded and would eventually be broken. It's only because of the connection and the anointing. It's that anointing oil. It's no good. Marcus ain't because I'm good. It ain't because I'm good. I told Marcus, Mark, uh, me, me and Marcus at work, tell him you can smack me later. I, tell, I was at work the other day, I walked down the hall, and I had to, I had, sometimes you got to talk to yourself, Shanta. I said, I'm a married spud. I'm a married spud. I'm a married spud. <laughs> Her uniform is way too tight. I'm a married spud. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married and I love Jesus. I love, I'm going to my office. I'm married. You got to learn how to talk to yourself. You got to learn how to talk to yourself and remind yourself. I told Marcus, the reason I like for the residents to call me Bishop is that way I don't never forget who I am. I don't have to forget who I am. Because right when I forget, Bishop! Yes, sir, yes, yes, bless the Lord, oh my soul. <laughs> Keep the connection clean. Stay in your word. Your word oils the connection. You can't be a prophet of God. Listen, I, th th this is a crude example, but when you the earlier you are, the more that it flows through you, the easier that it flows through you. I still got, mother, I still got some stuff that I got to, I got to, I got to do like that, uh, like, like the, like the uh, uh, tin man on the, on the Wizard of Oz. I got to, 
I got the I still got some areas that need all and up because he don't use me like that all the time. He don't speak prophetically all the time. But when I come under the anointing, when I come into the midst of the anointing, I, I begin to see what God sees. Like when I was preaching earlier and I said they're gonna be glory, they're gonna be glory after this. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. You got to understand. I don't I don't feel this anointing all the time. I don't I don't walk in glory all the time. Sometimes my feet stink. Y'all ain't talking to me. But when I'm in his presence and I'm under the glory cloud, I begin to see what God sees. And the thing that God is saying today is there will be glory after this. I don't know what your is is. I don't know what you may be going through, but I need you to understand that God's getting ready to put some glory on your life. I promise you when the glory comes in he don't even have to change the situation people will change themselves people will begin to break off and unlink and, and they begin to cut you off you won't have to worry about them deleting them on Facebook they'll delete you because they understand that there's something different about you the places I used to go I don't go no more the things I used to say I don't say no more because of the glory on my life I want unshakable faith I want to, listen, I don't, not God forbid that it ever happened, but if the doctor ever has to come in with a bad report, I want to be prayed up. I want to be prayed up, mother. I want to be prayed up. I don't want to be somewhere in the corner sucking my thumb, worrying about what might happen, but I want it to be well with my soul. I want to live right every day because if this is my last day, I want to know that with God I live and for God I die. Have I got anybody here that made up your mind that if God take me today, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Have I got anybody in here that's ready? Listen, stand on your feet and begin to God, give God glory in here. I'm done. I'm done. But I believe that God is wants to do something in you that you got to open up your mouth and give him some glory in this place. Come on. Come on and glorify God. God, we thank you. God, we magnify you because you're wonderful, God. The car wreck should have killed me. The, 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 the sickness should have killed me. But I'm still here. You're keeping my children. You're keeping my marriage. You're keeping me. Have I got anybody in here that said, God, God, I thank you for keeping me. Through the seen and unseen dangers. God, when the enemy would come in like a flood, you kept me. I didn't lose my mind. I had the gun. I had the pills. But God, you kept me in the midst of it all. He, he kept me. The depression couldn't take you out. You got to understand that depression comes to cause you to destroy yourself. I don't know about you, but I've set the pills on the side of the dresser. Got the water. But thank God I was scared. And I thank God for friends that would not allow me to stay depressed. You got to watch those people that are happy when you're down. Don't stay around people that are happy when you're down. Happy to be broke together. What? Ain't got two pennies to rub together. But you're happy. And her grandma said, you ain't got a pot to win the, the window to throw it out of. God's got some stuff that he wants to do for us. But we got to make up our mind that we want what God wants for us. We're going to go further on this talk about unshakable faith. Because we got to know who God is to us. We got to know who God is to us. And not only who God is to us, who we are to Him. 